Let's talk about a new generation of Palestinian fighters. Because some new armed resistance groups have emerged in the last couple of years. Israel has used massive military firepower to go after them and calls them terrorists. We will do what we can to fight the terrorists. These groups say they're fighting for freedom and against Israel's occupation. <laughs> So who are these armed groups? How have they come about? And what are they fighting for? Okay, let's start by looking at Israel's occupation of Palestinian territory, because it helps to explain what these new armed groups are resisting against. Israel's occupation has been in place for 56 years and is considered illegal under international law. Israel enforces a total blockade on the Gaza Strip and has ultimate control over the West Bank, even though some areas there are officially administered by the Palestinian Authority, or the PA. And in the occupied West Bank, Israel has built more and more homes for Israelis, known as settlements. They've constructed roads exclusively for settlers, and there's a huge separation wall. Palestinians need special permits to travel, and Israel has set up hundreds of checkpoints. There's also a constant presence of Israeli soldiers who routinely raid Palestinian neighborhoods, demolish homes, and arrest people, while Israeli settlers get military protection. Settlers have also been behind thousands of attacks on Palestinian villages, setting fire to homes and cars. The Israeli occupation itself is a form of sustained systematic violence, right? It, it is coercive by, by nature. Israeli army is there, it enforces restrictions on Palestinian life. There's basically this huge imbalance of power where the entire weight of the Israeli state and its military controls pretty much all aspects of daily life for Palestinians. It's a system that rights groups like Amnesty and Human Rights Watch say is apartheid. Where Israeli authorities methodologically privilege one of the group's Jewish Israelis, while authorities allocate different baskets of inferior rights to the other Palestinians, systematically discriminating against them. You can just see how people who were, who've lived that reality their whole lives, they don't see a future. Over the decades, Palestinians have tried resisting Israel's occupation in different ways. There have always been methods of non-violent resistance, things like protests, strikes, boycotts, and campaigns to build international support for the Palestinian cause. We've tried everything as Palestinians. There is the daily form of resistance of refusing to accept uh, what Israel puts a ahead of you. So for example, checkpoints. It would be so easy for Palestinians to just stay within the ghettos that Israel has created but instead, Palestinians resist by insisting on going through those checkpoints. And then, of course, there's the violent resistance. And that violent resistance is a resistance that Palestinians have as a right because there is nobody who is protecting us. It's not surprising when you look at the history of resistance that also there is an armed element uh, to, to the resistance the occupation not to justify violence, but it's violence that breeds violence. And there's been a lot of violence. According to the UN, more than 6,300 Palestinians have been killed since 2008. And there have been more than 400 Israeli military and civilian fatalities. Now, over the years, armed resistance groups have been set up, and they've usually been linked to political factions. Fatah, for example, is the main party of the Palestinian Authority, and has traditionally been in favor of negotiating with Israel. They have an armed wing called the Al-Aqsa Brigades. It's a network of fighters that emerged in the early 2000s, and they've carried out attacks on Israeli soldiers and civilians. The other main group is Hamas, which is in charge of Gaza. It has a political wing and an armed wing, known as the Al-Qasim Brigades, which carried out several suicide bombings in the early 2000s and is often behind the rockets fired from Gaza into Israel, attacks that have killed civilians. There are other armed groups too, which have been around for a while and also have political links. But the new groups that have recently emerged in the occupied West Bank aren't aligned with any particular political faction, nor are they controlled by the Palestinian Authority. 
The ones you mostly hear about are Lion's Den, which is based in the city of Nablus, and the Janine Brigades, which are based in the Janine refugee camp. These newer armed groups also tend to be smaller and local, mainly based in one town or neighborhood. And it's not clear who's in charge of them or how they're organized. It is sort of an ad hoc collection of mostly very young uh, male militants who belong to different factions who uh, don't have a, a kind of central command, either in in political or military terms. What we are seeing now is instead of them being confined to just one political faction, groups come together, form together to try to protect their camp, trying to protect their cities, their towns. I'm a shop, 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 I'm a so why have these groups emerged now? Well, one thing to keep in mind is the general context in the last few years. You've got this breakdown in Israeli-Palestinian relations, no peace process to speak of, and an Israeli government that includes far-right parties pursuing even more hardline policies against Palestinians. We have the most extreme government in Israel's history that is committed to a vision of greater Israel and to complete annexation and subjugation of the Palestinian population. And almost every week, we hear about further expansion of settlements, which mean more and more and more land is, is, is grabbed by Israel. <laughs> And more and more Palestinians are being evicted from their homes. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No! Instead of Israel being held accountable, it's getting worse. That's the Israeli context. On the other side, you've got the Palestinian Authority, which has become pretty unpopular. It's criticized for things like corruption and for cooperating with Israel on security and intelligence. 63% of Palestinians see the PA as a burden rather than an asset, and 77% want the president of the PA, Mahmoud Abbas, to resign. He took office in 2005. It was supposed to be a four-year term, but there haven't been elections since. He's now 87 years old and is seen as increasingly ineffective and out of touch. So people are viewing the government with a great deal of not only skepticism, but anger. It's so much so that when members of the government are going out into the streets, they're being yelled at by ordinary citizens who are saying, what are you doing to protect us? Now you have 18, 19 year old Palestinians who are saying enough. Uh, our, our parents and grandparents' generations have failed. Uh, and so we need to take matters into our own hands. In the last year, groups like Lion's Den and the Janine Brigades have claimed responsibility for attacks on Israeli soldiers and civilians, mostly in the occupied territories, but also in Israel. And Israel has responded with a huge amount of force. The Israeli army has carried out several raids in places like Nablus and Janine. In early July, hundreds of soldiers went into the Janine refugee camp in a three-day operation that included drone strikes and the use of helicopter gunships. Israel says it hit the Janine Brigade's HQ. Twelve Palestinians were killed, hundreds of homes were damaged, and so were the camp's water, electricity, and sewage networks. They were literally dropping bombs on a refugee camp and destroying the infrastructure. We still hear the same mantra about Israel having a right to defend itself, but we don't hear anybody saying that Palestinians have a right to defend themselves or that Palestinians are in need of protection. It's a cycle of violence that's only getting worse. In 2022, Israeli forces killed 151 Palestinians in the West Bank. Palestinian armed groups killed 25 Israelis in the occupied territories in Israel. Now look at the numbers for 2023, and we're only halfway through the year. All of that feeds into how Palestinians more broadly feel about the state of armed resistance right now. 
A recent poll showed that a majority are in favor of forming armed groups like the Lion's Den, and 58% support a return to armed confrontation against Israel to break what they see as the current deadlock. The goal now should be how do we prevent more death and destruction? You can pacify an area with massive violence and repression, but eventually you will get a new generation of Palestinians who don't remember that death and destruction of the previous rebellion and are prepared uh, to pay the ultimate price again. At the end of the day, it's about the broader conditions that brought us to this point. If we bring it back to those new groups of fighters, remember that we're probably only talking about a few hundred people. They're just one part of a much bigger picture. But the emergence and growth of these groups does tell us something about that picture, including the cumulative impact and decades of occupation and the lack of hope that anything will change anytime soon. Check out the full documentary where Al Jazeera gets access to the Janine Brigades. And make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can't miss our next episode of Star Here.